All right, Dan, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing today? Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. I'm doing great. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. First, start by uh, giving the listeners just a little bit of background on who Dan is. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm Dan Lukowitz. I am a senior director here at Encore Real Estate Investment Services. I am a net lease investment sales broker, which means I help uh, advise uh, buyers and sellers in the purchase and sale of their net lease property all over the country, um, transact in all 50 states. And, um, you know, I have a strong background as a real estate investor and business owner. And, you know, I love everything commercial real estate related. And, you know, I've become uh, an expert in one narrow focus, which is a net lease, whether that's, you know, single tenant net lease properties like Taco Bells and Walgreens and, you know, dollar stores, uh, medical office buildings. I just sold a medical office building last week. So do have some medical component there um, or shopping centers, you know, multi-tenant retail or retail and office. Um, you know, property. So that's really my specialty. I, I love what I do. Um, I love real estate and, you know, I'm definitely happy to be here today. If I was, you know, in the tail end of, of college um, and I actually helped to start a company called Disability Made Easy with uh, my best friends whose father um, at the time had uh, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. And, you know, we witnessed in addition to him, you know, having all the challenges of such a degenerative disease like that. He also had to deal with a contractor for the grab bars and a contractor for the, you know, um, ramp and a contractor for the shower and a contractor for the stair lift. And it just became, you know, almost overwhelming. So we started this one shop, one stop shop to help, you know, renovate homes to make them handicap accessible. And that's where I really got into real estate. I think for me, the actual moment was uh, a time where we had uh, our project manager and myself, even though I was involved mostly in sales and marketing, we drove uh, quite a ways to someone's home who had been in an auto accident 20 years prior. We got there and we met with him and his sister who was there. We saw the property. We went outside and I told him like, hey, should we get back in the truck? Like, there's no hope here. Like, how is this property at all suited to this individual who is unfortunately wheelchair bound? He didn't say a word. He took out some graph paper and a pencil and he started sketching. And 60 or 90 seconds later, he had a whole new front elevation and a whole new layout to the property. And we were able to take that property and, and, and make it suit its occupants needs. So for me, that kind of like emblazoned in my mind, this idea of being able to take something that's functionally obsolete and then make some changes to it and make the end result be applicable and 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 supportive to to the occupants. So that led me to, you know, purchase my first home for my family and uh, I had an opportunity to buy a house that was move in ready. This was, you know, middle of the recession obviously. Um, and then I found I heard that there were some bank owned properties a couple of streets over. So I got in touch with the lenders and there was a property that I was able to buy for cash for a lot less and I went in there and I hired out every single trade so that I could learn and again took something that was completely obsolete, gutted it to the studs, made it, you know, fitting and, and suitable for my home uh, and for my family. And that just kind of started a cascade of buying houses, renovating them and reselling them that, you know, I'd say at this point, I'm probably a hundred houses later. It's not something that I do actively as much as I used to. It's an itch that sometimes I still have to scratch, but that's really how I got my start into real estate. Tell me a little bit about, you know, when I see these Walgreens, um, you know, auto, auto parts stores, these big nationwide companies that I don't think do real estate. They have these great um, triple net lease scenarios for real estate investors. So do, are there builders out there to say, OK, down on the corner, you know, these Walgreens, do they just go and build them and then sell them? Or how, how does how do these come available like this? So, I mean, we really have to rewind 20, 25 years for most of the pharmacies because most of them were developed, you know, in around 2000, 2005, in that time period, which are 90, 95 to 2005, which, by the way, if you do the math, most of them have 20 or 25 year leases. There, most of them are coming due right now, which puts the owners in a precarious situation, which we can kind of touch on in a minute. But the way that it works, and it's the same concept today with other asset classes, other products. So a developer, a developer will buy a piece of land um, in an area that they feel meets a, a tenant's uh, you know, parameters. They'll obviously check it with the tenant to make sure that that site gets approved. And then they'll build to the tenant's specifications the actual property and they will sign a lease with the tenant 
for a certain amount of years at a certain rental rate. Maybe it has lease increases, maybe it doesn't. Certain type of guarantee, whether it's the whole corporation or a smaller sub entity. And then typically once that, you know, once they get close to completion, about 180 days before rent commences, they'll typically list with someone like me and, you know, we'll market the property and close typically a little bit before rent actually commences with a, a rental credit, you know, from the developer to the to the uh, new owner. But, you know, you can maybe see kind of behind the scenes some problems brewing. You know, the typically the developers are looking for the tenant with the best credit, right, to give them the lowest cap rate and that's willing to pay the most rent, right? Because that's gonna justify the highest sales price. So, you know, unfortunately, a lot of these 350, 400,000, 450,000, $500,000 rent deals that are great real estate, but they're, they're super high rent. Maybe they're paying $30 a foot, but the market will only support 15. Well, what I said a minute ago, in a scenario where the leases are coming due and now that the tenant has the leverage to negotiate, well, if they leave, you're stuck with a tenant maybe that can pay half the rent after you spend three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars or more with in tenant improvements, getting the space, you know, retrofitted to this new tenant. You know. There's a great line where th these guys are basically like the defenders of what's right. Now they, they use some weird means, you know, to by killing people to defend what's right, but they only kill bad guys. So somehow they get into a conversation. One of the guys says, We're like 7 Eleven right we may not always be in like be in business we may not always have business going on but we are always open and that's kind of how i view myself as a broker i'm not brokering deals 24 7. but if my phone rings at 11 o'clock at night and it's one of my clients on the west coast or if it's a saturday morning i take the call right i'm checking my email every single day because i love what i do and i'm obsessed with what i do so if you're selling your building you need someone like me who's hustling who's got boots on the ground who is every day calling the right people and sending the right emails and getting the marketing out there and who has that following. I mean, I've got 20,000 followers alone on LinkedIn that see my you know, deals and reach out to buy them. So, you know, that's that's super important. I don't often get into this this argument or conversation with clients because they understand the value of the value of brokerage. Um, but sometimes, you know, I get into this conversation when they say, hey, well, will you reduce your fee by one percent? And typically, unless, you know, every situation is different, but typically my response is, is if you work with me, I understand somebody's offering you 1% less, but if you work with me, I guarantee you, I'm going to get you more than 1% more. I got a question for you. I've got, um, uh, I've acquired, you know, a couple different locations where it's residential and zoning changes and there's commercial moving through. Uh, you know, so it's a it's a residential structure and we just got to rent it out now. Uh, but I think that these places and I've heard, uh, you know, the chatter through the years about, you know, Dollar Generals doing some sort of white box with these kind of stores. Where would I even look at or what would be the first place to say, hey, I've got the background. I, I could come up with the funds. I could white box something. But how would I even make those connections with a dollar general or you know whoever whoever puts these kind of leases together like that great question so obviously you know about real estate and let's just like i will just call a spade a spade i probably know about more about real estate brokers than you do right mm -hmm. sure yeah so i i had a situation where i had a property and that i was purchasing and we needed to get a new tenant for the property do you think that i i decided to do the leasing brokerage myself so that i can make a little extra money no way I went straight to the expert in that market and hired him as the leasing broker, because guess what? You know a lot about real estate. I know more about commercial real estate brokerage. He knows more about leasing brokerage in that market than both of us combined. Mm -hmm. So that's my first piece of advice there is find the local leasing broker that's an expert. And if that's hard to do, one of the best ways to do it is you find out who's active. So you go on Crexy, you go on LoopNet, and you see who has the most listings for properties like yours, for lease, right? And then you get to know that person and call that person and you give up the whatever it's gonna be, four, five, six percent of the rental income during the base term by hiring them because they're gonna be the one that has the connection to the national tenant. You might be able to land somebody by calling Dollar General. By the way, if you ever want to, you know, if you ever want an experience in frustration, try to call one of the dollar stores and try to get try to talk to them and see if they'll be your tenant. But my point is is that like that might be 
the worst tenant for your location. Maybe they can get you a better tenant paying more rent. So that's 100% what I would do is, is get to know that person, talk to that person, you know, be very friendly with that person so that, you know, they pick up the phone when you call and, and you're top of mind in terms of their task list of all the hundred other deals they're working on and, and have them help you.